Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimme Camper. We had a trip last week to New Orleans. It was a great trip. I'm just gonna kinda go over some of the, the obstacles that we had during our travel days. Hopefully you don't ever have any of these, but it's some things that we had to overcome. And I just wanna let you know that just because we had some problems, we still had a great trip. We still enjoyed ourselves. Um, but I'm gonna go through you know, what specific problems that we had on this trip and kinda give you a, just a basis of what we're doing to correct those things as well, okay? Now the first problem was snow and ice. So we left uh, December 26th from Tennessee. It had been in the last few days like down to nine degrees. And on December 26th in southern Tennessee, northern Georgia, northern Alabama, it came a pretty good snowstorm. And we didn't leave till later in the evening, which we were planning on spending the night somewhere between here and New Orleans anyway. So we weren't in a big hurry. Um, but I also didn't really expect it to snow. However, it did start snowing when we were packing up. So this in itself wasn't too big of a deal. We got all packed up, we got hooked up, didn't have any problems hooking up. I actually thought that the Anderson hitch might give me an issue when we were hooking up because it was below freezing. And I have had a couple of times where the cables froze up there. So I was a little apprehensive about it, but got hooked up, no problems at all, and we got on our way. Now it was kind of dark when we started because it gets dark here like 5, 5.30 these days. And so it was dark when we started heading out. We got through Chattanooga, okay, less traffic than usual. Thank the Lord, because there's always a ton of traffic in Chattanooga. And about the time we were getting on the other side of Chattanooga, it started getting just a little bit slippery. About the time we got to 59, it did get a little more slippery. I actually did have just a little bit of slide in the truck one time there. That's the only time that we had any sliding other than the two times that I had the cruise control on and it got a little overzealous and really wanted to like work it out there. And so I, I eventually turned that off so that didn't give us a problem anymore. And it was safe traveling 30, 40 miles an hour down through there. A lot of cars were going slower at like 20. Um, but I felt very safe going 30, 40 most of the way, but we didn't clear the snow and ice until we got to Birmingham, Alabama, actually. Now we spent the night somewhere, I think it was around Meridian, Mississippi, and you know, all in all, it was perfectly fine boondocking night. We stayed in a Walmart down there, didn't have any issues at all. Got up, continued our trip, got down to New Orleans. And that's where I encountered my second problem. My second problem was that my Anderson hitch, it didn't want to unlatch. So then when you turn, you're supposed to be able to turn the cable, the knob on the cable and that kind of unlocks it and then you can pull it and unlatch it. And it just kind of spin and it's never done that before. And so I had an issue there. Truthfully, I didn't look into it too hard. Um, the time that it did freeze up on me, number one, I was thinking maybe that was the issue as well because we just left where it was all freezing. Um, but after sitting, I unhooked it and then after sitting in the New Orleans for a couple of days at 70 degrees, it still didn't work. And so I didn't dig into it too much because I, what I did when I unlatched that was I did the same thing that I did when it was frozen that time. So. I tried to just pull the pin out of where the ball goes down into the Anderson hitch, but there was too much pressure on there because everything wasn't like totally, totally straight down with the pressure. And so I didn't figure that would work, but I tried it first. So then what I did is I loosened up the Anderson base from the truck bed. I just lifted the ball, the base, everything up. And that way I could pull the truck out and take a better look at it. Now, like I said, I didn't delve into the issue too much. What I ended up doing was I did pull the pin out of the shank at that time and drop the base off so the base wasn't hanging there. But the whole time we were in New Orleans, um, the ball was stuck in the camper. I hate it when my balls get stuck. Took a quick look at it a couple of times and saw that it still was having issues. I kind of felt like the handle might be broke, but I didn't even look at it. I figured personally, like if I was gonna mess with it, I was gonna, uh, I've never had too good a luck at, at cables, which is why when we did the um, sewer valves, we switched the electronics. I've just never had too good a luck messing with cables. And so I kind of figured that I would rather it be stuck in a locked position than it unlock and me not be able to get it back where it was locked and take a chance on that. So 
what we did when we hooked it back up, so we did the exact opposite. We, you know, put the, the base up on the ball, put the pin through, backed the truck under the whole base, and then lowered the base down over the ball, which was a little bit more tedious than you would expect. There's a lot of like trigonometry involved in this because there's angles everywhere and you got to get like pretty straight down on there for that pin to go underneath the, the round ball in the truck to hold that base down. But I figured that was going to be a lot easier than getting that shank with a ball out of the trailer to drop straight down in there. So we just kind of did everything in reverse and that worked. And I'll tell you, after I came back, I did talk to Anderson and they gave me a couple of pointers on what to do. And the worst case scenario, I was going to have to replace that cable. It's like somewhere around $100. But I looked at it after they kind of gave me some pointers. And whenever I was looking at it, I noticed that the plastic handle was broken and that it's kind of like the, the knob on a stove or on a grill or something, you know, where it's a plastic handle, but it goes over a metal shaft that's got like uh, one side shaved off. Actually, this had both sides shaved off where that way that that piece of plastic kind of gripped that metal and turned it And the plastic handle was just broke. So. I learned just a few minutes ago that all I had to do when I took the plastic handle off, I used an adjustable wrench and I just loosened that the quarter of a turn that it usually takes, quarter to half a turn to free up the, to unlock the ball and that worked just fine. And then I had to use a pair of pliers to pull it because after you turn it, you got to pull it and I couldn't get enough grip on there with my fingers. But you know, it released the ball just fine. So I did talk to Anderson just a few minutes ago, sent him back an email. And I will say their customer service has been great. They said that they were gonna send me out a new handle. Um, that's like the second or third thing that they've actually sent me where I've had an issue before and they've never charged me for anything. So I have to give it up to their customer service. As far as the last thing, it's, uh, it's probably the biggest inconvenience of the whole trip. And it's more that feeling of uncertainty. So we were headed back, we were still in Louisiana. We were on the interstate, we were headed back and I noticed on the tire minder system there was 50 PSI in my passenger rear tire on my camper. You know, I did upgrade to the Goodyear Endurance tires and we've had nothing but good luck out of these so far. So I got to the next exit, pulled over, I used my air compressor, put air in the tire, got it up to 75 where I usually keep it at 75 PSI and then you know, I went around, we did the other tires, topped all of them off, and everything seemed to be fine. It was still holding the proper pressure. I just did a quick glance. I didn't, I thought about moving the truck up a little bit to watch, look at the rest of the treads and everything. Um, but, you know, after 10 minutes or so, we were sitting there, it's still at good pressure. I thought, ah, I think it's okay, so we'll just go. So got back on the interstate, we started going. And that was probably my first mistake. I'll, I'll own it, okay? So we're back on the interstate and everything's fine. And we go into a little bit of a rainstorm. Well, then I start getting a little bit of an alert saying that there's a slow leak in that tire from the TPMS. Well, that's happened before when we go into rainstorms, but it was the same sensor that I had issues out of just about an hour ago. And so I, I kind of thought about it and I kind of ignored it a little bit. I thought, well, I'm about a mile away from that next exit, so I'm going to try to get up there. I'm going to try to get to that next exit, because if i got to deal with the tire, I don't want to deal with it on the side of the interstate. So I slowed down a little bit, was trying to limp up to the next exit, and granted, I didn't. I was still going like 50, 55, um, started out at 65, and so I'm limping up there, and all of a sudden, it goes from 60 PSI to two PSI, and then immediately says four PSI. Still don't see any signs of any imminent issue as far as, you know, besides looking at the TPMS. And so I'm, I'm kind of committed to trying to get off the interstate. I mean, we're almost to that exit now. And that's when I start seeing the smoke. Smoke everywhere on my, on my passenger mirror. And so when I saw that, I immediately turned my turn signal on, got over into the shoulder and stopped. I tried to get over as far as I can. It was a very busy interstate there. Um, 
luckily the tire was on the passenger side so I'm at least not like laying on the road trying to fix this tire with trucks like a foot from me and so luckily it was on the passenger side now you know I had a few issues now that tire was hot too whenever it pulled over I told you it's smoking there's pieces of rubber like all the way down through there on the road where the I think it's pieces of the sidewall because the entire sidewall outer sidewall was missing I personally felt like there may have been a nail or something in the tread that I didn't see the first time, but then I got kind of, I don't know, I mean it did hold air for 45 minutes to an hour, so I'm not exactly sure what happened to the tire, but I can say that looking at the tire now, there's no evidence of any punctures in the tread or anything like that, and the entire sidewall and the outer sidewall is gone. Um, the inner side wall has a small hole in it where it started letting loose, but I think I was able to stop, you know, in time where it didn't, number one, it didn't cause any damage to the camper, and number two, it didn't cause any damage to the rim. Both of those things I'm thankful for. So then the next problem that I had is my 12-ton jack that I carry with my bottle jack buddy. It was too tall to go under the axle with the wheel blown, and so I had an issue there. I couldn't I couldn't get the jack under there. And so what I ended up doing was I jacked up, um, got my four by six that I use for my, my landing gear out of the back of the truck. I put it under the jack and then I put the jack just under one of the mounting points for like a uh, auto level system that's attached to the frame. And then I jacked it up as far as I could there, which still wasn't enough for me to, to uh, put the tire on. So then I went to the, my truck and I got the jack out of my truck and then I put that under the axle to jack it up a little bit more and really I wasn't trying to jack it up, I was more trying to use it like a jack stand because uh, I have used that to jack the camper up before and it's not, it, it's kind of wonky and I don't really like it. So I wasn't trying to have it high or anything. So I put it under the very end of the axle and I put it as high as I could and then I got my 12 ton jack down and I got it underneath the axle. Now I still couldn't fit the bottle jack buddy under there to get that good connection with the axle. So I was um, kind of, I don't know if you ever heard that song that shows on uh, some shorts and stuff sometimes where it says I'm about to do some sketchy stuff. Yeah, that's kind of what I was feeling there, especially with all these trucks whizzing by. But I also didn't want to wait like three hours on AAA that may not show up. I, mean, I don't, well I don't have AAA, I have, uh, I have roadside assistance through another program, but anyway, you know, I didn't feel the need to do that. I wanted to get off the highway as quickly as I could, and it was on the passenger side, so I was good with that. So I did get the tire, I did get it jacked up where I could get that spare tire on. Now my spare tire was also the Trailer King tire, one of the Trailer King tires that came with the camper originally. And I've said it once, I'll say it again, I think that those tires are fine if you're just a normal person that uses their camper no more than an hour or two away from the house, I think, I think those tires are more than adequate. However, we're not that kind of people and we do a lot of long trips and we're doing a whole lot of long trips this year. And so before we went out west, about 18 months ago, I did upgrade to the Goodyear Endurance tires. I have a video on that and it kind of shows some of the points that I'm making here. And I'm not going to blame this on the tire even though I think that that might be an issue. Um, I still think that there might there's a, a source there of an initial leak that I hadn't figured out that I don't think was the tire. Somebody asked me if they thought it was the, uh, somebody asked me if I thought it was the Colby Ultimate stem that I had on because I had a video out about that a couple weeks ago. I don't think that that's the issue at all. Um, he was saying that, you know, he thought that by doing some research that that was for more for an emergency type thing and not to leave on there. I told them they do have emergency kits and they're just toolless that you don't need a wrench to put on. Um, but I have talked to representatives at Colby Valve as well as TireMinder who both recommend this product for the, what I'm using it for. And I'm probably going to use it on my new, my new wheels which we're going to get into in just a second. But I don't think that was it. I think, but I don't know exactly what caused the failure of the tire, and it was only 18 months old. I will say that those tires, those Goodyear Endurance tires, as far as the strength of the sidewall, they were very strong compared to the Trailer King tires. 
Um, but, you know, I'm kind of leery about it and I have obtained a couple of axles. You know, I've always felt like the suspension on this rig was underbuilt. And so I think it has 44, 4,500 axles on there. Um, I've got a couple of axles that are 5,500 as well as some 16 inch wheels. And so I am going to take this opportunity to change that because I think that it would be fine if I just got a, an endurance tire and put on there. But I'm kind of that point where I want to do the best thing that I can do. And I just want to go ahead and overbuild the system as much as possible. And so what my plan is, is I'm going to put these two 5,500 pound axles on. I'm going to put the 16 inch wheels on. And I've actually already ordered, I've not got them yet, but I've ordered some Hercules G rated tires to go on there. Now, those endurance tires, they felt like twice the strength just by messing with them is the, uh, the Trailer King tires. And these rated G tires, they should be like twice the strength of, of the endurance tire. And so, you know, I'm gonna ward off all the evil spirits that I can. This is quite an expensive uh, endeavor as, you know, when you start messing with the whole problem of, of suspension, it's where do you draw the line? The line that we're gonna draw right now, we're gonna use the same springs. I am gonna install the Sumo springs that I had before that I was gonna do when we did the lift and we didn't get those in, so I'm gonna install those. And I think those together with the, the springs that are there, I think that that'll be fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all that together we're gonna have that done before our next long trip, which is to Washington DC on spring break. Um, so we're gonna have that done by then. And we're going to kind of tidy up some other things. I am going to have to cancel a trip um, that I had planned for later on in the month. But, you know, I just don't trust this with the spare to, to you know, kind of go. I mean, it did carry us eight hours here, but now that I don't have a spare, I don't want to push my luck. And so we're canceling one trip. The next trip that we have in February is a group trip with a bunch of friends that's like 35 minutes from here. So I don't mind taking, taking that from here to there. Um, hopefully I'll have my new tires by then and we'll have everything done. But if we don't, I'm more than comfortable going, going there and back. But, you know, I just want to share with you guys, like, just because a lot of the things that, that I share with you guys are the rainbow and sunshine part of things. You know, everything's not that way. And it doesn't matter how much experience and how much you think you know. Um, you know, number one, there's always somebody who knows better. And number two, you know, you decide, you kind of change your styles a little bit as you go. But just because you have some bad incidences on a trip doesn't mean that you have to let that make you have a bad trip. I've done those before too, that's no fun. Just keep looking at that glass as half full and not half empty and that'll change your perspective on your whole trip. So we'll have those videos coming out for you about New Orleans coming up, but thanks guys for tuning in and we'll see you around. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.